Welcome to this edition of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at a little bit of unboxing of these master screw props. So, one of the things, one of my viewers turned me on to these, um, mentioned it generated uh, some crazy thrust, or at least really good thrust, and I took it as crazy thrust. And these are compatible with the Phantom 1 through 4. So, the 4s require an adapter, and I think they're supposed to be in here. So, let's go ahead. I haven't opened the box quite yet. So I'm going to do that. So the props appear to come in a nice bag. And then let's uh, actually just kind of dump everything out. So we have some stuff here with regards to props and uh, propellers. Because I think these are going to require nuts. Um, so they're not going to be your, your typical um, self-tightening ones. And these look like the adapters for the Phantom 4. Because I understand the 4 requires different ones. And these require these are some screws and some um, some screws and an Allen wrench, and I believe that these go to this and for the uh, uh, Phantom Four. So I have the Phantom Three standard here, which I'm going to use these on. Uh, as I understand it, that so far that these only really come in white in this version. Now these are a fairly aggressive looking prop, I must say. So let's compare them to the standard Phantom props. So here we go, we have the stock prop, and then we have the new prop. And just right off the bat, you can tell that that is a far more aggressive prop. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is let's get the calibers out, and let's see. So at the widest point, this guy is roughly uh, about 20, a little over 20, eh, so it's about 30.5. And this guy is 31.5. So this has at least about, probably about a millimeter more girth. Now, one of the things, I don't know, I'm going to try to zoom in. The tips of these are turned up. There's like a foil on the tips, which is really interesting, uh, which these do not have. So that is a big difference. And you can also see, let's take a look at the end here. So I'm at about a, roughly about 11, and then let's take a look at these guys. And so I'm about 14.5, roughly in the same, you know, maybe around 14 near the same spot. So, I mean, this is not a perfect measurement, but these are far more aggressive um, prop than the stock. Now, the way it appears is that uh, these mount on here, so I'm going to open this little bag up. I always hate these little bags. My fat fingers just can never seem to be able to open them. Uh, okay, let's get this. And um, there seems to be... Um, so I think this is, this is a clockwise prop. So this is black, so I'm going to put a black nut on here. So the idea is the nut... I'm, I'm going to make sure I get this in here. The nut sits in here, and then this goes on here, and then you kind of spin, the, whoops, this is going to spin backwards because this is clockwise, isn't it? Yes. Got to remember which way I'm spinning my nuts. So, uh, so this spins down and kind of tightens up in the same fashion. So that goes on there really nice. Um, wow. Wow. It does actually go in there very nice. So let's go ahead. I want to put um, a counter. Let's see what's a... It is kind of hard to see. This looks like it's also would be a black. It's kind of hard to see the... Uh, uh, direction. Sorry about that. I'm trying to think. I turn it because you kind of got to hold the prop up, turn it down. And so uh, definitely comes comes fairly close to the body. So let's uh, I'm going to put one of the stock props on. And again, you can really start to see the difference between these props. Now, lengthwise, let's take a look at the length. Um I think I'm gonna have to get these other ones. I'm not even sure that these other ones are gonna go big enough. No, they're not. I have to get uh, a bit of a ruler. 
Okay, so the stock props are going to be roughly about about 24 and a half centimeters long or about uh, a little over 240 probably about 245 millimeters where these guys are eh, they appear to be about the same length why does it look bigger am i measuring this correctly oh, let me move this up here so you guys can see what i'm doing maybe maybe you can see if i'm lying so that's uh, about uh, 24 and this is about 24 so they're about the same same width I think the uh, or same length I should say I think it's really the width that's uh, uh, doing it and also the angle here seems to be far more aggressive uh, as let's uh, try something here um, So that's what it looks like for that. And then let's do a similar measurement. So you can see here with the contour gauge that this has, this definitely has a more aggressive curve to it. So this is the um, air, the master air screw, and this is the stock. And so you can see that there is a definitely uh, a, not only a larger foil there, but also what appears to be a little bit more aggressive foil. Now, I know you guys out there are going to now start writing me about PID. Now, I'm going to do probably do a more of a video on PID in the future. And for those that don't know what PID is, basically PID is uh, um, an, an algorithm to keep, uh, pro, you know, keep a system from overshooting itself. So if I were to draw this out, let's take a look at this for a second. As if I'm at point A and I want to reach point B, I go along this line. So I have, I have acceleration. So this line is acceleration. Now what happens is, is if I ramp up, I should say probably this is more so time. And then so this axis will be acceleration. And so if I ramp up real quick, I could overshoot the B target. And this is what PID does, is it estimates of how fast of a curve should I ramp up so I achieve my B target right on time rather than... So it's going to minimize overshoot and undershoot of the target. Now, one of the things in FPV racing, um, you want to have your pits at very tight because the idea be behind FPV racing is when you push the stick, you want it to go as proportional to the movement of the stick as possible and it's sort of like overdriving a car if you will so you notice sometimes you know, if you get into a sports car the steering is very tight so you turn it a little bit it turns that much you get into a luxury car and it's more like a boat you really have to work that wheel around and this is what PID does and so again I'm going to do a video a little bit more but my point is I just want to share a little bit for, uh, with those out there who aren't familiar with PID just to kind of give a base working and you can Google it and find out more. But the thing is, on copters like this, the PID range, I believe, and, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm, I'm pretty, pretty close on this. The PID range, you know, between, you know, uh, point 0.1 and 2 here on this graph is going to be pretty wide. So I'm not thinking you're going to have a huge amount of over undershoot by going with these bigger props. Um, because I'm also going to do a little bit of a series on how the gyros and accelerometers adjust the copter uh, because that's going to be a play factor. But I really just don't think that there's going to be a huge pit issue with this because the bigger piece that we're trying to achieve with these, uh, you know, I'm going to call them video copters, if you will, more so, um, is achieve, you know, photographic stability, lift, and we're not really trying to race them, you know, so when we turn at a specific time, it's exactly perfect. So again, I think these, these blades will probably operate in the realm of this operational pit range uh, for these devices. Now, um, I don't believe on the Phantoms you can change the pit. Again, 
Uh, I'm happy to be corrected if I'm wrong, but I haven't seen anything on the Phantom 3. Well, I take that back. I think there are some adjustments for performance in the Phantom 3 settings under Advanced in the Go app. So I do take a little bit of that back. So you can probably adjust a little bit for this performance curve. So I'm not 100% sure. Somebody more familiar with that, let me know down below. But I don't see these as being a huge issue for those that are going to write me and say, Oh my God, the PID. So anyways, I wanted to share these with you. I'm going to do some flights with these, and I'll share the actual flights with you and tell you what I think of these. Um, because I'm very interested in this, in performance and lift that we can get out of these characters. Uh, because one of the things, I'm going to give you a little bit of a spoiler here. I've also got this in. I am going to build a lift mechanism, or sorry, not a lift mechanism, but a drop mechanism for this guy that use, uses this um, serv serverless payload release um, with an Ardu uh, Arduino Nano. I'm going to build this in here, so keep a watch out for that too. That'll be in an upcoming episode. Because I've seen something on, over on Ken Heron's channel. He, um, for 200 bucks, got this release mechanism, and I'm like, wow, 200 bucks. So I got this for like 12 I know, no, sorry, this is like 21 bucks. This is rather expensive, but I thought, why can't I couple this with an Arduino and do a timed or some other type of controlled release mechanism uh, for far less than 200 bucks? So, anyways, look forward to that in the near future. So, anyways, hopefully, you guys found this interesting. I'll keep you guys posted on how these guys perform. Uh, we'll do a flight in not too distant future. Uh, hopefully the weather is going to get better and stop raining and I won't have to travel for work as much. And uh, we can take a look at this. So hopefully you found this interesting. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget subscribe buttons coming over there. Share this video with your drone friends out there too. Maybe they'll enjoy it. Comment below if you have these or you have any questions about them. I'll try to answer them. Uh, usually these videos are done in a little bit of rears because I travel for business. So... Um, by the time it comes out, if you have questions, I probably have already flown it and I can help answer them. So, and I'm always happy to do that because it's a big part of this channel is uh, sharing with you guys. So, cheers and we'll see you in the next video.